the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we are solving 146 LRU cache. Design a data structure that follows the constraints of a least recently used cache. Implementing the LRU cache class, which obviously is initialized with some capacity, and that's the amount of size the cache can hold. You're also gonna have a get, which takes an integer and returns the value of that key, um, if it exists, otherwise minus one. You're also gonna have a put, which can update the value of the key, if the key exists, otherwise um, put it into the cache. And if the number of keys exceeds the capacity, then pop the least recently used. And we have the constraint that get and put must both run in a big O of one average time complexity. Okay, so we've now read the problem um, and we know what the constraints of the problem are. Let's think about how we might solve this. So obviously the problem with doing it in a like dictionary, um, you know, where we have some key here is that we don't actually know the kind of update time um, when it was put in there and we can't actually tell what's the, you know, the, the key that was most recently added, the key that was not most recently added. We could, in theory, you know, store like a timestamp of when it was added, but then in order to pop something, we have to parse all of the values, and that's going to actually give us a big O of n complexity, which doesn't work because we, we have to do it basically in big O of 1. How can we actually get big O of 1? <laughs> so there's two ways of solving this problem. Uh, the first way is to cheat, um, and you're going to use whatever language uh, you're using. There's probably going to be some like ordered uh, dictionary data structure, which, which basically allows you to do this problem uh, without any issue because it will handle all of the updating for you. Uh, unfortunately, uh, interviewers probably don't wanna see this uh, solution and they actually want the kind of real solution, which is to use a doubly uh, linked list, right? So, uh, so double, double-ended uh, linked list, right? So the kind of the intuition here is that um, you're gonna have, you know, all of your values um, are gonna be in nodes, right? So you're gonna have some nodes and these are gonna represent kind of the temporal uh, structure of the data where we're can, we'll say this is the head here and this is the tail. Um, and this is going to be uh, so this is doubly linked. Anyway, so this is the head and this is the tail, where the tail represents the most recent uh, key, right? So this is the um, most recent, most recently added, and the head is going to be the um, oldest key, right? So if we have the the head, the pointer to the head and the pointer to the tail, then we can very easily get whatever the most recent is. Um, so that makes it easy. But we also need to combine not only using this doubly linked list, but we also need a map, uh, which says basically for each key, um, basically mapping to the node such that we can instantly get it. Um, because otherwise, in order to get its value, we'd obviously have to traverse the node and that, uh, sorry, the linked list, and that would be big O of n. Uh, but if we have this mapping alongside of it, we can quickly in big O of one time actually get the node itself and return its value. And then we'll have to basically move it to the end. So whenever we want to basically update a key, we have to look up into our dictionary. Let's say we're finding this node here. We'll call it, I don't know, three. And we want to find three. We've, you know, we can return the value, but we also need to move it to the end. So we need to basically say that this node here, the one before it, its next pointer is now going to be this node here after the three. And then its, um, you know, next or previous pointer is now gonna be this node. And then we actually move the three to the end here. And now these two will point uh, to each other. So essentially, you know, we're not going to walk through all the operations because it's just uh, too much time and it's actually much easier to do it in code, but that's kind of the gist of our solution here, right? We want to have a doubly uh, linked list and we're also going to use a map to actually store where each uh, node is. And then whenever we need to make an operation to move some things around, uh, we're going to basically change the, the next pointer of the previous node and the previous pointer of the next node, and then we're gonna move it to the end uh, as we see fit. So that's the kind of general approach. Let's actually go into the code editor and type this up. I promise it's not as hard as it sounds. All right, so it is now time to code this up. Unfortunately, in Python, there is no default kind of doubly linked list um, data structure, so we're gonna need to implement it for, for ourselves. Luckily, it's pretty quick, so we're gonna say class list node, oops, list node, and this is going to be uh, def init, 
So we're going to take self, we're going to take a key and a value. And basically, we're going to say self.key is obviously key. Uh, self.value is going to equal to value. Self.next is equal to none because we haven't set any kind of like next uh, pointer yet. And self.prev is also going to equal to none. Okay, cool. So that is the actual um, list node. Now we can define the init function for our LRU cache. And remember that we need to keep track of the capacity. That's important. So let's actually store that variable. So self.capacity equals capacity. And we're going to say so self.node uh, map, because remember, we need to map from each key to the node that represents it uh, in our kind of internal cache here. Uh, we're going to need to store this. So we're going to store that as an empty dictionary in the beginning. And we also need kind of placeholders for what the head of our linked list is and what the tail of the linked list is. Um, so that we can actually access those at any time when we need them. So we're going to say self.head is going to equal to list node. And we're actually just going to store a dummy uh, variable here to store uh, values for basically the head and the tail. They're just going to be dummy values. So we're going to say self.tail equals to <clears throat> list node minus one minus one. And then because it's a doubly linked list, we actually need to link them. So we're going to say self dot uh, head dot next is going to equal to self dot tail and conversely self dot tail dot prev is going to equal to self dot head. Okay, cool. So now they are linked. Perfect. So before we actually implement get and put, we need some kind of helper uh, methods, which are going to make these operations easier. The first one and the easier one to implement is actually the remove method which given a node is basically going to remove it from our linked list structure. So all we need to do is if we can think about this as say we have the structure, this is our linked list, one, two, three, if we want to remove two, then one now needs to point to three and three needs to point to one. Uh, and if we can do that, we will basically have removed two. So let's see how we do that in the code. So basically, we're going to say, okay, so the current node, it's previous. So in this example, the one uh, dot next is now going to equal to whatever the next of the current node is that we want to remove. And conversely, we need to do the opposite where we do update the previous pointer. So we're going to say, so uh, node dot next dot prev is going to equal to node dot prev. <clears throat> cool. So that is the remove method. Pretty simple. Let's now actually do the add method. And remember, when we add something to the linked list, we can think of it as being added uh, to the end because it's now kind of the, the most recently used. So we basically just need to add it to the end of the linked list. So we're going to say def add. And we're going to take in a node. And what do we need to do here? So obviously, it needs to go at the end. So let's first get what the actual end is. And remember, the tail is not actually the end node. It's just a dummy for what the tail is and actually the previous one is the actual um, last node. So we're going to say the previous, whoops. Uh, so prev end is going to equal to uh, self.tail.prev. Uh, because if you remember, self.head and self.tail are actually just dummy nodes. So they don't actually store any values. Uh, so we're going to get the previous end. Now we need to start updating the previous end. So we're going to say the previous end, its next node is now equal to this uh, node that we were just trying to add. And conversely, we need to update the current node. So its previous is now going to be equal to the previous end. And then the next node of our new node is now going to be that dummy tail. So self.tail. <clears throat> and then we also need to update the tail. So we're going to say self.tail.prev is going to equal to the node. So basically, we've still maintained our dummy structure and we've now added this uh, node. And this is kind of the new, um, basically, the, the, the tail. Okay, so now that we've done those two, we can essentially do get and put. So what we want to do here is very simple. So to get a key, so if a key doesn't exist in the cache, then there's nothing to return. So we're going to say if key not in self dot, I think we called it node map, yeah, uh, node map. So if it's not in there, obviously, all we need to do is return minus one. Otherwise, we need to actually get the key. So we're going to say, otherwise, the key is self.node map <clears throat> for that key. And now that we've actually gotten a key, remember that we need to update the LRU cache. Because when you um, get a key, then that means it's been recently used. So it should go to the end of the LRU cache. So basically, the, the tail uh, such that it's now it's been used, right? It needs to go to the end. 
So the way that we do this is we're actually going to remove it from where it currently exists, and then we're going to add it to the end. So we're simply going to call those two methods in sequence. So first we're going to remove it from wherever it is in its current position in the linked list, and then we're going to add it basically to the end. Um, and we need to underscore these because that's what I named them. So underscore. Okay. So now that we've done that, um, we can basically signify that, um, yeah, we have this add here. So otherwise, uh, once that it's done, remember, we just need to return the value of the node. So there you go. Now let's actually do put, which is a little bit more complicated, um, but it's not that bad. So if the key already exists in our data structure, then we just need to update the key um, and we need to basically update its position, right? So if if the key is already in, so in self.nodeMap, uh, we need to update its value. So we're going to say the old node uh, is going to equal to self.nodeMap of key. And we need to actually remove um, this key from the map such that uh, we can add, then add it to the end because now that we're updating its value, that technically counts as being used, so it needs to go to the end. So we're going to say self.remove uh, the old node. Now we actually just need to uh, add a new node to the end, and instead of trying to update the old one, we're actually just going to create a new node because this allows us to save code. Um, now we can kind of proceed uh, in both cases. So now that we need to update the node, we can actually just create a new one. And that allows us basically to, to do the case of when it wasn't in there as well at the same time. So we're going to say that the new node we want to create is going to equal to a new list node of obviously key and value. And we're going to say, um, okay, we are going to say self dot node map um, of our key is going to equal to the node. So basically if it already exists, we can override the value. If it doesn't over already exist, then we're going to create it. And we're going to add this key um, to the end, right? So we're going to say self dot add dot node. And you'll notice here that basically we would have to like add this here um, without creating a new one. But to basically save us from having to write this operation twice, we just do it down below. Okay, so now that we've done that, we are almost good to go. But the problem is that remember, we have a capacity here, and we've just added a node to our linked list. So we actually need to make sure that we're not violating the capacity constraint. So we're going to say if the length, oops, the length of self dot node map is actually greater than self dot capacity, um, then we need to basically remove um, the least recently used one. So remember, that's going to be basically whatever is the head of the linked list. So we're going to say node to delete is going to equal to self.head.next. Remember that self.head and self.tail are just dummy nodes. They don't actually store valid values. It's always the next node on the head that's actually the first one or the prev one on the tail. So now that we've done that, uh, we found the node. We just need to remove it. So we'll call our remove method. Um, and I just caught a little bug here. This should be underscored um, self.remove um, that node to delete. And then we also need to remove that key from the actual dictionary. So we're going to say delete from self dot node map of node to delete. Um, and remember, this is a node. So we actually just need to get the key um, because we, we store the key as the key here. Okay, and that's it. Um, this function doesn't expect any output. So we just return none here. So let's clean this up, we'll run this, make sure we didn't make any mistakes. Val uh, oh, God, it's value. Okay, let's see. I think that's fine. Hopefully. <laughs> Did I? Okay, cool. Looks fine. Runtime. No attribute remove. Okay, great. Where is it? Yeah, forgot to underscore it. That should be fine now. Yeah, okay, cool. Accepted. Nice. All right, so time and space complexity. Basically, as the problem told us, um, we were only allowed to do big O of one operations for everything. But as you can see, um, this is just updating a linked list. Nothing in here is um, uh, above big O of one. Same with here. We're just updating some things, uh, pointers on a linked list. That's big O of one. Here, we're just getting something out of a dictionary. That's big O of one. And again, just updating some pointers on a linked list. Same with here. We just create a node. So nothing here is actually going to be greater than big O of one. Same with our get operation, all big O of one. So nothing there is um, greater than big O of one, which is really nice for the space complexity. 
it's obviously going to be big O of capacity. So however much we store in our LRU cache is just going to be dependent on capacity, right? So however many elements we want to store, that's how many uh, we're going to store. So that's how you solve this problem. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, definitely implementing the linked list solution is not as fun. Using the kind of cheat ordered dictionary method in Python is much more fun and easy, but uh, it is what it is. Anyway, this is what you need to do in the interview. Otherwise, you probably will fail. Um, yeah, if you learned something today, why not subscribe to the channel for more content like this? Leave a like and a comment for the YouTube algorithm, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.